Hello guys and welcome to another video tutorial on how to make a seared furnace in Tinker's Construct. To start, let's talk about the seared furnace functions. First is that this furnace is far more superior to a normal Minecraft furnace. Second is that this furnace can have a lot more slots to put stuff in just by raising its level in height. As you can see, the smallest furnace you can build is a 3x3, one level in height, and it has 12 slots for use. The interesting part of the seared furnace is that its design is similar to a smeltery, with only one minor difference is that on the smeltery you put the seared stones or the seared bricks next to the main floor, but on the seared furnace you put them on top, like this. Let's start by making a seared furnace. We will start by making a 3x3 area, minimum required. Like this, we put it on top. This, have this space open in the middle. Controller, seared tag, next here. Now we put the cap on, like here, and it's activated. The next thing on the seared furnace is that this furnace must have a ceiling on top, not like the smeltery. If it doesn't have it, it won't activate or function. Like you see. Second is that when you fill up the seared tank, both of them, all of the lava over here and here will go to the total amount of lava usage in the seared furnace. On the seared furnace, you can have more seared tanks than just one, like this, or over here. We can put another over here, and it's still on. Four seared tanks, and remember, all of the lava in all of them will go to the total amount you use on this furnace. Now, in the old versions of Tinker's Construct, we had only the smeltery. And when we made the smeltery 4x4 or another wide level 5x5 or maximum of 8x8, that has 64 slots, we could have increased its uh, wide mode here. Instead of 3 slots, we will have 4 or 5 slots. Right now, in the current version 1.8.2, we only can have 3. The same thing goes for the furnace. We can make it as big as 8x8, but it will still have 3 slots over here, it can't go any wide than this. And keep in mind the slots 64 here differs from a normal furnace there. 64 slots is only available for the smeltery. Right now if you want to build an 8x8 smeltery or an 8x8 furnace, might be just for show if you really want, or if you're low on resources, you might want to build a smaller version. But if you have enough, you can actually build the biggest one available, like this. Now, I will show you how many slots you can get on a seared furnace up to its maximum of 8x8. The first furnace we can make is a 3x3 one level in height and has 12 slots of space. Second one I made is a 3x3, two level in height and has 15 slots of space. Third, I made the biggest, 8x8, one level in height, 117 slots of space, can hold around 29 stacks and 16 pieces, and uh, for example, burn time for cobblestone 16 pieces is 2 minutes and 10 seconds with a seared furnace. For one piece of cobblestone is around 8.2 seconds. This is just for example. Fourth is a 4x4, four four, one level in height and can hold and has 21 slots of space inside. Fifth one, 5x5, five five, one level in height. And has 36 slots inside. Sixth, 6x6, six six, one level in height and has 57 slots. 
And the last one, 7x7, seven seven, one level in height, and has 84 slots inside. One more thing to keep in uh, to keep in mind is that if you place the sear tanks in a wide level furnace like this, a seven by seven or a five by five, it won't activate. Even if you say uh, place them, place a furnace, the tank normally, let's see here, it still won't activate. You will have to place it right there on the corner. So tanks, if you want to put it in the the wide level, normally, or like uh, the as let's say let's say as wide as you want, normally you'll have to put them on the corners. Otherwise, if you put them next to the controller, the furnace won't actually activate it. So keep this in mind when we're talking about increasing its height level to get more slots. Let's see how much we can get by increasing this in level. One, that's one, two, and three, four, and five. Now, let's see how much we have, as in slots, you know, three by three, and five levels in height. We have six, twelve, eighteen. 21 and 24. 24 map slots normally on a 3x3 and 5 levels in height. Now you will see the cool part of this furnace. As you can see, we can cook or smelt one stack of uh, food or ores and it will split it. By 16, 16, 16, and 16. And you can have a lot more inside here just by raising the level and height. All items normally that can be smelted or cooked can go inside the seared furnace. Do keep in mind that some ores from some other mods cannot be smelted in the furnace. The furnace won't actually accept them. And I'll give it about an example right now. This is the first example from Tech Reborn. We have the box at or if we put it like this, it won't actually item cannot be cooked. If we take a box it or from immersive engineering, this will start to accept. It will accept this one, but it won't accept this one. So keep in mind that there is a bit of difference between the ores in some other mods that this furnace can actually smelt. Now you see from the top how the shared furnaces look on it on their wide level the 3x3 ones 8x8 4x4 5x5 6x6 and 7x7 this is how they look from the top side now let's talk about the difference between a seared furnace and a smeltery the seared furnace can cook or smelt 16 items at a time, as you can see here. But the difference between this and a smeltery is that the seared furnace cannot double the ores that you want to smelt. And of course, it cannot hold liquids as a smeltery can. So you can only use it for so you can only use the seared furnace for some recipes that only require you to smelt or cook items in a furnace and the smeltery of course it will help you on those uh, recipes that require liquids molten liquids as it we say now let's talk about how to automate the seared furnace as you can see i've used ender io conduits for this automation system over here there are the fluid tanks you can have any other fluid tanks that can hold hot liquids. I've, uh, I've put the modes on extract without signal. They will automatically extract lava towards the shared tanks and keep them filled all the time. On this side of the pipes, 
I've put them on the mode insert so they will insert the lava in inside here and as for the item conduits I've made this chest here the input chest I know you put items in this they will automatically go inside the furnace smelt and it will output them to these chests over here now the mode for the item pipe that goes inside the seared furnace is in and out insert the green channel remains like this default normally on each of these chests you will have a item basic item filter that you will put either whatever items you normally want from the seared furnace to go in like here or an advanced item filter that can hold more as I said or an advanced item filter that can have more options for you to put items in the whitelist here the same goes for the other two chests you'll have to choose whatever item you want that uh, will be smelted or cooked inside the furnace to go into what chest you want and let's make an example let's put a raw chicken and let's put a gold ore the raw chicken got into the chicken chest the gold got into the gold chest I already did a testing so that's why it shows three but this is a basic automated system for the seared furnace whoever has more knowledge of an automated system with pipes it can do a better job than this normally and have it more efficient. I've used Android concretes just because they are much more efficient of space wise in my opinion than other item pipes or fluid pipes. You can have a fluid pipe, item pipe, redstone pipe, conduits basically into one block connected by each other to whatever you want not like not like the others that can take up more space but this is like the basic idea of an automated system hope you guys enjoy it this is the end of the tutorial hope you guys enjoyed the video give a like and comment what you think about it